In 2026, the automotive world turned its attention to a launch that promised to be a game changer, the Tesla Model 2. Priced below use $13,000, it wasn't just a car, it was a promise. But not everyone was thrilled by the futuristic lines or the sensors scattered everywhere. For many people over 55, the question was much more practical. Would this new car be easy to use? Or would it be just another one of those vehicles that look beautiful in advertisements but are impossible to handle in everyday life? After all, what good is all this technology if it only serves younger people? One aspect that surprised many was the door design. In leaked images and launch animations, the cyber cab style doors stole the show. Wide openings, bold lines, a true visual spectacle. But what about when parking in a crowded shopping mall or in your home garage? Wouldn't this type of opening become a problem? More than that, what if a person with back problems or who uses a cane needs to enter and exit safely? A beautiful door that doesn't respect the body of the person who will use it is just an expensive ornament. Another point that few people comment on, but which makes all the difference, is the height of the seats in relation to the hips. Many people over 60 can't simply get down in a car like they did in their 30s. If the seat is too low, it's torture. If it's too high, it feels like you're climbing a ladder. Ideally, there would be a middle ground where the person only needs to turn their body, sit down, and then pull their legs up. Simple as that. But did anyone think about this when they designed the Model 2? Because the public that most needs accessibility is usually the one most forgotten in these projects. Now think about the movements your body makes to get into a car. Rotating your hips, twisting your spine, bending your knees. All of this requires coordination and flexibility. With age, these things cease to be automatic. A well-designed car takes this into account. It creates generous angles, comfortable openings, and supports in the right positions. But if the Tesla Model 2 was designed with youth and style in mind, it can become a daily nightmare for someone who just wants to go to the supermarket without suffering. And it's not just about comfort, it's also about safety. An elderly person who has to exert effort to get out of the car can lose their balance, strain their lower back, or even fall. This is without even considering the risks in emergency situations, such as an accident or electrical failure. If the door has an automatic mechanism and the battery fails, how can one get out quickly? The autonomy of technology cannot override the autonomy of the user, and this needs to be taken seriously in a model that aims to be popular. There's also the emotional factor. A car isn't just transportation, it's freedom. When an older person chooses a new car, they're saying, I'm still independent. But if using the car makes them feel limited, frustrated, or dependent on others, something has broken. And what could be a symbol of autonomy becomes yet another reminder that the world wasn't made for them. That's why accessibility has to be at the heart of the design, not as a last minute accessory. When you hear about an electric car announced for 2026 costing around $12,149, the first impulse is to think that someone has finally solved the price problem. But there's a detail that almost no one immediately notices. The price tag is just the beginning of the story. The real shock usually comes after the first scare in traffic, that silly bump on the bumper in a tight parking lot, or a minor collision at a traffic light. That's when many people discover that a cheap car can turn into a huge loss in a matter of days. The video makes it clear that there's a silent trap in this type of vehicle. The cost of repairs. It doesn't take a serious accident for the insurance company to start doing some cold calculations. Hours of labor, waiting time for parts, the need to recalibrate sensors, and especially even minimal structural damage are enough to push the car into the total loss category. In a vehicle that costs just over $12,000, this line is crossed very quickly, sometimes with damage that visually seems almost irrelevant. One of the biggest problems in this scenario is the complexity of the project. Sensors embedded in panels, 
structures glued instead of screwed, large parts that don't allow for partial replacement. All of this is great for speeding up mass production, but terrible in the repair shop. A simple dent can require replacing an entire assembly, not just a single part. The result is reflected in the bill. Repairs that easily reach $10,000 on a car that's worth little more than that. For those living on a fixed income, like many retirees, this type of situation is not just inconvenient, it's frightening. Imagine someone who saved money for years to buy a new car, suffers a minor accident, and suddenly discovers that the insurance company prefers to pay compensation rather than repair the vehicle. The amount paid usually considers depreciation, not how much that person still owes or how much they sacrificed to buy the vehicle. The emotional and financial loss comes along with it, without warning. And this isn't a theoretical or distant problem. It's already happening today with several modern electric models, including much more expensive cars. The video makes a point of reminding us that futuristic design and efficient production engineering don't automatically translate to repairability. For a truly popular car, the ideal would be exactly the opposite. Simple panels, modular parts, repair processes accessible even to independent workshops, without relying exclusively on the manufacturer's network. The sophisticated doors, for example, which attract so much attention in concept images, are a nightmare when something goes wrong. Rods, motors, position sensors, alignment systems. All of this increases repair costs and downtime in the workshop. In a minor accident, something that in a regular car would be resolved in a few days can turn into weeks of waiting, further increasing indirect costs and the owner's frustration. Even though the 2026 Model 2 is designed with a focus on efficiency, economy, and mass production, one question lingers. Will it be safe enough to protect occupants in collisions with giant SUVs and three-ton pickup trucks that dominate the streets of the United States? The answer, so far, is still shrouded in speculation, as real data from independent crash tests has not yet surfaced. And in this scenario, relying solely on simulations or marketing promises can be a huge risk, especially when someone's life is at stake. The difference in mass between vehicles is one of the biggest villains in road safety. No matter how much engineering evolves, physics remains unbeatable. A light car always fares worse when it collides with a larger, heavier vehicle. Therefore, Tesla needs to be extremely precise when designing the Model 2's crumple zones, energy dissipation paths, and, of course, the integrity of the passenger cabin. A miscalculation in these areas can make all the difference between escaping unscathed or not in an accident. The video highlights that the secret lies in the balance between rigidity and shock absorption. It's no use making an ultra-rigid car expecting it to withstand impact. That only transfers all the force to the passengers. At the same time, if it's too soft, the structure falls apart before protecting those inside. The ideal is to create zones that deform in a controlled manner, channeling the impact energy away from the passenger compartment. And that's where Tesla's previous experiments with the Model 3 and Y come in. They may offer good solutions, but they can't simply be copied in a smaller car. The dimensions of the Model 2 present new challenges. A shorter, lighter car has less material and less space to absorb impacts, requiring creative and often expensive solutions. Tesla, of course, has expertise in advanced simulations and has already run thousands of virtual tests to predict structural behavior in frontal, side, rear, and even rollover collisions. But as the video itself emphasizes, simulations are just assumptions until they are validated with real-world tests, preferably conducted by independent entities such as the IIHS and NHTSA. Another relevant factor is that safety doesn't depend solely on the car's structure. It also involves elements such as the braking system's response time, the quality of the collision sensors, emergency maneuverability, and even the driver's visibility. All of this may seem secondary, but in a fraction of a second, 
These details determine whether an accident is avoided or becomes inevitable. In a car that aims to be the most affordable of the brand, it's legitimate to question to what extent these technologies will be present or if they have been sacrificed in the name of price. Safety for older occupants also requires extra attention. More fragile bones, slower reflexes, and chronic medical conditions make any accident potentially more serious. Therefore, if the Model 2 truly intends to cater to this audience, it cannot simply check the box in tests. It needs to offer a level of protection above average, considering the natural vulnerability of a large portion of its potential buyers. While safety concerns persist, a new element emerges as a key piece in the Model 2's viability puzzle. Battery production in Europe. Giga Berlin, already attracting attention for its scale and ambition, is hosting a billion-dollar investment to expand local cell manufacturing, something that could determine whether the Model 2 will remain just a promising concept or an affordable reality for millions. By 2026, this expansion is seen as a crucial strategic move for Tesla to reduce costs and lessen its dependence on China and the United States. The stated goal of reaching 8 GW per year by 2027 is ambitious but necessary. This is because, today, Tesla still imports a large portion of its cells for European production, which means logistical costs, exposure to customs tariffs, and, worse, vulnerability to geopolitical crises. If there is an embargo, a new trade war, or even a simple increase in freight costs, the entire Model 2 business model could be compromised. Producing batteries locally, therefore, is not just an efficiency move. It is a survival measure in the international arena. However, there's an important detail. Manufacturing batteries in Europe, as Tesla itself admitted to Reuters, is almost impossible to do profitably at the moment. The cost of energy, higher wages, and aggressive competition with Chinese manufacturers make the challenge even greater. Therefore, gains must be incremental based on small but constant improvements in the production process. This includes everything from the choice of materials to the layout of the assembly lines. Revolutions are not expected, but every penny saved can make a difference in the final price of the Model 2. From a technical standpoint, batteries represent up to 40% of the total cost of an electric car. This means that any advancement in this area directly affects the selling price. But that's not all. Vertical integration of production also allows for greater control over quality, faster implementation of new chemistries, and better adaptation to regional needs. For example, a Model 2 manufactured for the European climate may have different thermal settings than one sold in Florida or Texas. Another advantage of local production is integration with the rest of the factory. Less transport time, less idle inventory, less chance of logistical errors. Furthermore, there's the environmental aspect. Locally made batteries generate less carbon emissions during transport and improve the brand image in a market where consumers value sustainability more rigorously. If Tesla wants to maintain its ecological appeal in Europe, it will need to deliver more than just green promises. There's also the strategic side. Dominating battery production in Germany puts Tesla at an advantage against European competitors like Volkswagen and Renault. These brands have been investing heavily in their own production centers but face similar difficulties. Whoever manages to solve this energy puzzle first will have a lasting competitive advantage. And Elon Musk knows this. Every GWH produced in Berlin is one less piece in the Asian dominance over the electric vehicle supply chain. While expansion may sound far removed from the reality of the average consumer, it directly impacts the final buyer's wallet. If the cells are manufactured near where the car is assembled, the cost decreases, the price can fall, and the company's profit can be reinvested. This creates a virtuous cycle that benefits everyone, from the production line, to the elderly gentleman who wants a reliable car to visit his grandchildren in the French countryside. The battery, though invisible in everyday life, is the true heart 
of the Model 2. If battery production is the heart of the Model 2, then its realistic range is the lifeblood of the entire project. And here's a point that's almost always masked with numbers that are too idealized to be true. A car might promise 250 or 300 miles of range, but what happens when it's facing hills, headwinds, the air conditioning blasting, and a trunk packed to the brim? Suddenly, that nice number on the spec sheet disappears, and range anxiety takes over, especially for older drivers who don't want surprises in the middle of the road. This is where Tesla's engineering needs to show that it has learned from the past. The Model 2 will, it seems, be equipped with a battery of around 50 kilolalazwis. This seems sufficient at first glance, but any experienced driver knows that practical consumption varies drastically. Average speeds above 110 kilonobarons h, temperatures below 5 degrees Celsius, and stop-and-go urban traffic can reduce range by up to 40%. In other words, a car that promises 400 km may only deliver 250 km or less. And nobody likes driving with the feeling that they might break down at any moment. Therefore, it's not enough to simply put in a medium-sized battery and call it efficient. Tsudikori. Real efficiency comes from the sum of several factors. An optimized motor, an intelligent inverter system, well-thought-out aerodynamics, and, most importantly, energy management software that learns from the driver's usage. If all of this works well, the Model 2 might even be a pleasant surprise. But if any of these pillars fail, the car can quickly gain a reputation as a deceiver. And that kind of label sticks and doesn't come off easily. Another key point is the charging system. Many people think the future lies in superchargers scattered along highways. But those who truly understand electric cars know that the game is won at home. Level 2 charging, done overnight in the garage or in a parking space in the building, is what guarantees ample autonomy for the next day. And if the Model 2 wants to win over an older audience that appreciates practicality and routine, it needs to make this experience as simple as possible. No complicated settings or confusing apps. It has to be plug-and-play, charged, and done. Furthermore, support for charging in less technical environments needs to be considered. It's unrealistic to expect that everyone over 65 will want to install a solar panel or understand amperage. Ideally, a plug-and-play solution would be needed. It should be inexpensive, reliable, and installable without needing to break down walls. Tesla already has a good reputation in this regard, but the Model 2 will require an even greater level of integration. After all, it's a car designed to be many people's first electric vehicle. And there's more. The range needs to be sufficient not only for those who live in the city, but also for those who commute daily to rural areas, to visit children or grandchildren in another city, or even to shop in more distant commercial centers. This means creating a car that can handle the strain not only in the website's graphics, but also in practice, with plenty of headroom to deal with unexpected detours, traffic jams, or even a colder day than planned. Interestingly, the simpler and more intuitive the use, the more advanced the car needs to be on the inside. This is because an intelligent system needs to anticipate problems that the driver hasn't even imagined. The Model 2 has the chance to be that kind of car, one that doesn't require adaptation, doesn't generate stress, and simply works. But this will only happen if Tesla hits the right balance between power, economy, and user experience. But when it comes to headaches, 